Let's start. Cool. Alright. Thanks for everyone who's still alive, still left. Curious. And so next up, we're going to talk here for John. And I've never heard you wear a C++, so. Hi. Hi. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, I'm still jet lag. I've been up since about 2 a.m. So if you think you spot an error, um, probably have. Uh, so I'm not going to sort of zip through these. Um, just tell me if you've got any comments or questions, otherwise I'll just go through as best I can. Uh, uh, nice. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, um, background is I'm writing a, a library called CNL. It uh, contains some uh, new types. Uh, I'm trying to get some of them standardized, uh, added to this, this is my standard library. Um, please do feel free to check out this repository. It, um, it's mostly production ready. Um, so, what am I trying to solve with this library? Um, uh, this plus has some pretty good uh, new types built in, and people kind of Write about them, but so we, we've seen kind of where some of these ideas have come from. They, they've stuck to type pretty well, but they've got problems. So, integers in particular, they have the resolutions fixed. Obviously, you can only work on units of one. It's not really a reason that, that has to be so. Um, a, uh, a range is fixed, and uh, something like Python 3, um, you don't overflow. If your number gets too big, the, the type just gets bigger. Um, and then the, the arithmetic behavior of imps is it's not consistent. Um, it has all sorts of edge cases, uh, non portable aspects. Um, voting point um, has problems of its own. It's complicated. There's, uh, there's all sorts of um, interesting state that it takes a lot of effort to implement. Um, it, there's some things about it that aren't very conducive to. Um, Mathematical abstractions. Um, it could really do with some uh, context for love. Um, that is uh, in the works. There's, there's quite some progress uh, here, but it's it's quite frustrating. For instance, that you can't um, generate a cosine and a compile time. You really want to be able to do that easily. Um, the, re the fact that the resolution is variable depending on the scale of the value um, can be a problem that you don't see with integers. And in particular, and uh, more relevant uh, day by day, is the fact that uh, floating point can, uh, one estimate I've heard is that floating point is about 100 times as expensive in terms of energy in silicon than integers. Um, and often it's not, you're not getting the, the full benefit of it. Okay, so um, I would say that floating point, um, it is, it's a, um, a pretty well designed type given how old it is. It's still test the time pretty well. And the problems related to it aren't so bad. So you can get overflow, but it's an awful lot harder to, to get overflow, for example. Um, integers, on the other hand, are nice and lean and efficient, um, but they could, they could be improved a lot. And that's what I'm trying to do. So, okay. So with CML, I'm Trying to draw inspiration from the, the standard template library, um, which does, which kind of takes the idea of uh, arrays, raw arrays, and um, just takes some uh, really far distance, does incredible things with the, with, with the starting point of array. So it is an example um, using split array, which is very similar, um, especially in terms of the, the code that it generates, to just a, a raw uh, C style array. And then iterators are even even more interesting. They um, do an awful lot of the stuff that a, a pointer would do. So, um, for instance, uh, you could write a code where the, the it doesn't matter whether you're using split array or or raw array. Um, you'll be able to use a lot of the, the same syntactic sugar for both. Um, and then you could opt in. To additional features that do have runtime um, performance um, costs if you want, but that's a choice that you, you make. You're not forced to pay for anything that you don't use. 
most importantly, um, the STL um, provides a huge amount of composability. Uh, there's, there's two uh, aspects of the STL here, um, and four uh, standard library features. And this type just two together, I haven't written a line of code, this takes exactly zero bytes when it compiles. Already you can, you can look at this and you can infer an awful lot of information about the intent of the author of this line. It's, uh, if somebody wants to just cache the contents of files so that they don't have to load them multiple times they can store them in memory. Very simple. So one thing I don't want to do is um, uh, don't be afraid of what SCL doesn't do for the phrase. <laughs> what do I mean by that? But as I said, I don't want to use the paper anything they didn't use. Um, so one example, uh, it's quite arithmetic. Should uh, the, the uh, integers only have units of one? Um, it's a good choice and it's a good default. I'll, I'll give it that, but uh, um, it doesn't have to be the only one. So, part of the definition of the, the fixed point type in the CML library um, it's a, a template uh, over a rep, that's a, an integer type. So, if you're familiar with the kernel duration, for example, that also has a, a rep template. The parameter and another hope it stores that integer, nothing else, it's just a wrapper over an integer. And then fixed point has an exponent which uh, basically says you can think of it as telling you how many um, bits left or right um, to shift this value in order to scale it um, to whatever scale you want. Um, this will become clear when you see an example, um, maybe a bit clearer. So, here um, is how you this kind of synopsis how you, how you might. Sometimes we might use fixed point. Um, here we, we are storing an int, but we want to give it eight fractional digits. So it's, it's pretty easy to be able to store a quarter in this value. So under the hood, everything is um, scaled um, by 256 times. So um, 0 0.25, that's actually going to be an int um, storing by 64. And then that, that gets scaled up when you want to convert to and from 30 point. And so if we, um, we print out, um, and it, it is, uh, has all, all the arithmetic operators you might want, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look and act like a 30 point number, but there's, uh, there's, there's no 30 point involved, um, apart from to, to convert this to the end. Actually, this is very easy to pile out to integer arithmetic anyway. OK, so um, the, the good thing about uh, this type is um, anything about uh, int that are good, for instance, the efficiency uh, of int types, um, you're going to get that with uh, the fixed point type of your stancy problem. Um, so here's an example where we're, we're just, um, this is a sort of classic example of a really extreme um, optimization which you can achieve with int, where you take an int and you add a number to it, you Guarantee always that you now have a greater value. Um, that's because you, you're not allowed to overflow with it. So, as so long as you stay within the bounds uh, of an int, you, uh, you get some quite impressive uh, optimization. So, I think the compiler will look at this code and it will just uh, optimize it out to, to uh, true. So, it's going to be true. Um, uh, that's, that's exactly what the best compiler. Try and refresh this, see if I can uh, Yeah, there we go. That's, that's the code in um, uh, Power Explorer. Does everybody know what Power Explorer is? Uh, if you don't, um, check it out. If you can use it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you, you, can't, you can't get a function much smaller than that. It's a lot of things that you need to involve. Does it fit or turn the same? Sorry, what's that? Does you see eight or uh, um, Well, I, I'm trying to show off here by going for as low a version as possible. Oh, so okay. this compiles with GCC 4.8.1. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm pretty confident that with the truck it also um, reduces the same code. All right, going to have to refresh again. This is necessary. Um, uh, here's another example of um, kind of a proof that um, this type is purely a wrapper over an integer. It doesn't incur the additional cost. Uh, what I want to do with fixed point is save people tedious error-prone effort. Uh, if, uh, 
today you could quite happily do fixed point arithmetic by hand um, using more inks than you have to do to type of stuff like this. Um, the idea of fixed point is that it, it figures out some of the uh, some of the tedious work for you to, to reduce the chances that you'll make a mistake. And also hopefully make the uh, make the code a little bit more readable as you go. And um, I, I aim to uh, incur no cost um, for the for the benefit of, uh, of using these types um, where it's all possible. Uh, that was that was a lot. I have no idea anything that it's doing. It's as big as it is because of uh, the um, the uh, uh, IS stream um, stuff going on now. Um, but there are some things about integers which uh, um, can be a problem, um, and they come along for the ride. So, for instance, here's an example of uh, undefined behavior where you are exceeding the range of an int, and you just cannot ever do this. Uh, you know, I, I could do a whole talk about undefined behavior. I believe at least one person is going to be talking about it in BCCD um, uh, this week. Um, and so, if you do a, a similar thing with fixed point, you're going to get the, the exact same problem. Um, you're, you're introducing an error into your code, which is uh, very difficult to detect, um, uh, often impossible to detect uh, at, at no cost. Um, yeah. However, um, yeah. Uh, there is a, a upside to, to, to UB. It allows you to find errors in your code. So if you've done this, you, you've, uh, you've made a mistake somewhere, and you can get sanitizers, for instance, to tell you um, that you've gone out of bounds. Uh, I'm pretty certain that UB sound, for instance, would um, uh, patch, patch this kind of error. Um, better still, if you um, are making constant expressions, uh, and, and fixed point is a constant for decorating to add, um, you can actually use the compiler to catch a lot of um, errors for you. So, uh, Stagger Cert is a C++ um, feature. Um, I, I can't recommend it highly enough, particularly in combination with the concepts for keyword. So, so here, um, what we're doing is uh, we're um, generating an expression. It um, uh, evaluates to true, and therefore this line can pass. It's fine. In the second example, this expression does not evaluate to true, and static assert permits an error as if, uh, as if you were doing the unit test, uh, but the product compile time. And then the third um, category of behavior you get out is uh, um, here for, this is an example of under, undefined behavior. You cannot shift, uh, if you're in, if you're in 32 bit, you can't shift them more than um, 31 bits. Uh, it's undefined behavior if you do so, it's an error, you should not do it. And uh, the static assert doesn't even get as far as evaluates this. It says, "Sorry, you can't put this in a, you can't put this expression in the static assert because it contains undefined behavior." Uh, this, this is a good way to uh, make sure that your code is correct at compile time. And uh, sh sure enough, uh, again, what you can do with ints, you can do with fixed point as well. This isn't doing quite the same thing because when you're adding one here, it's actually Adding it to under the hood is adding a much larger number, but uh, the effect is the same. That's okay. That doesn't <coughs> okay. Um, and this is a really uh, great example of a, uh, a reason why people kind of um, hate integers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, a little, a little bit of um, history. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing here, but perhaps so I can shed some light on this. Um, when integers were 16 bit, uh, it would have made a lot more sense to say that when you are performing operations on a signed and an unsigned integer, that you should, you've got to choose one. Both both ranges of these kind of overlap. Is that you can't convert signed to unsigned and, and always get um, good results, and vice versa. So you've got to pick one uh, choice. Um, the, uh, at some point in the design of the C, I, I would imagine. They went with unsigned. And if you think about um, the era when uh, it's were 16 bit, um, imagine you had done value you know, 40,000 there, um, you'd get the exact same problem in reverse, but instead of with negative numbers, numbers greater than 32,760 
1967, um, would cause people to scream at the, uh, their screen just as, just as much. Um, now with 32-bit integers, um, uh, it's clearly the wrong choice, but at the time it probably seemed a lot more sensible. Um, and again, um, fixed point doesn't, isn't trying to fix it. Uh, I think there is talk in the, in the, um, the committee of actually changing this behavior, it would be hugely disruptive, but they have started to talk about this now, they're talking about the spaceship operator and trying to modernize uh, comparison. So maybe this maybe this will get fixed sometimes. If this gets fixed, this will get fixed too. Um, so, uh, so up until now, I've mostly been talking about C++ eleven features. Um, now, this is an example of C++ seventeen. Um, up until now, you've had uh, you've had to specify the uh, template parameter for fixed point. Uh, there is now a class template argument reduction. It looks at the um, the value which you're, the value you're passing to the constructor, and it can figure out reasonably from that um, what the, uh, the template pack should be. It just um, goes ahead and uh, saves you having to bother with writing around the brackets there. So this this line is the same as this. Uh, another side note: people will really annoy that they always have to write a message. They don't have to write a message. So um, uh, I really like this uh, this feature. It's impossible to Okay, so lovely okay, stuff. Um, I'm going to get on to uh, division, which is uh, a major bugbear of mine, um, which I'll get into, but via multiplication. So, uh, fixed point, uh, as I say, it's just a wrapper over, over integers. So, when you perform multiplication, but you, for instance, you, you multiply a value that has eight fractional digits, um, so what type are you going to get at? Is it going to be fixed point? Uh, in, Minus eight. Um, if it was, that would involve an additional shift operation. Actually, what you get is um, <coughs> an exponent of negative sixteen. It's uh, added negative eight and negative eight, and that's the reason for that is because that is that is simply how um, the the, uh, the arithmetic sort of falls out. Um, and refresh. So here you see. Um, uh, another proof that uh, um, we're getting uh, just about bits on the screen there, that we're, we're, uh, that we're not uh, paying the cost for this abstraction. Um, and this is this is somewhere where if you were, again if you're writing uh, if you're doing fixed point arithmetic by hand, you could get into problems if you forget that any is scaling um, not by 256, but after the squared value, you've got to scale it down by 256 squared. Um, that's just tedious. Um, um, mind-numbing math that is easy to get wrong that you don't have to worry about with, with fixed point type. Um, so uh, why am I telling you all this if this is about uh, division? Well, um, when when we divide, um, uh, this is kind of um, a bit scary. But instead of adding the exponents together, you subtract one from the other. So we have a numerator. Um, and a denominator with exponents uh, in the eight, um, they cancel out to give you um, a fixed point value with no fractional digits. Um, in this case, uh, because the denominator is greater than the numerator, you're, you're going to get zero. That's kind of serious rounding error. Um, hmm. But that's that's how integer division works. Um, if you if you want to uh, undo the error, you've got to <coughs> use the uh, modular operator, and, and you can do this if you want that. Uh, to get the correct results. Uh, under the homework, once again, I I'm sure hopefully you can trust you by now. This is this is just a division operation and a modular operation that you're to the integer. But it's um, often not what people want, particularly if they're expecting floating point type uh, results. What you really want is more um, fractional digits, not, not fewer fractional digits. So a uh, pretty good formula is to say, well, we'll take we'll um, was, we'll look at how many uh, integer digits, whole numbers digits, you have in the numerator, and, um, um, and we will kind of do a switch I will show you on the next slide, actually. It's, it's, it's easy to show you that way. Um, so here, you see that the number of um, integer digits um, kind of get added up, the number of fractional digits get added up. So one, one plus one, 
Richard's digit of two. Richard's digit is in the result of multiplication. Um, and you kind of get a, a similar thing with division. So here's multiplication where the, the digits going in, <coughs> you know, the number of digits going in contribute to the width of the output. Um, and you get a lossless operation so long as the result is um, the combined width of the input operands. Um, and you, you do kind of get a similar thing going on with division. Um, but yeah, there's a switcheroo now. Um, D and C are kind of swapped around here, so the, the denominators into the digits contribute to the uh, fraction digits of the quotient, yada yada. But there are, there are exceptions to this, and I don't know if anybody can think of any examples of where this kind of doesn't hold. Uh, yeah, can you think of any? I'm so worried somebody would say one seventh. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a lead, if you have a, like a fairly modern Android phone with stock, the stock Android calculator, just type in one seventh and then try and scroll along to see how how much precision you get. Uh, <laughs> I've met the I met the guy who uh, implemented this. So like one divided by seven. So it's this recurring number, not 0.142857, 142857, and you can keep scrolling. You keep scrolling. <laughs> Google pays him to do it. Um, and he says, oh yeah, that sounds fun. Um, this is pretty awesome. I'm already up to, you know, a thousand digits here. This is pretty, this is pretty neat. But uh, I'm not doing that. I'm using fixed, <laughs> fixed widths for things. Um, I can't really uh, depend on uh, dynamic allocation for the kind of efficiency that I'm looking for. Um, so one way to get around this is uh, with a, a fractional type. Uh, very often you'll retain all of your precision if you just uh, remember the denominator and don't uh, apply it too early. And I'm trying to find ways to kind of resolve this conflict between the way that floating point and integer division work. So here, you uh, the, the same values as before, but the field is the result zero. Uh, put them into a fractional type, and you can uh, perform you know uh, arithmetic operation on um, fractional that you wouldn't lose any precision. You get your thirds and your seventh, sevenths, etc. Uh, and then eventually. Um, if you do want to convert it to just a single quotient value, you can do that and, um, uh, using um, a fast end date argument deduction again. You have to figure out something with a, a reasonable exponent. Um, so we get a, a fairly reasonable value out, out here. And if you if you don't want um, the, the class to figure out the type for you, you can say there's a particular entirely type you want. You might just want to. Uh, convert it back to this value, you can put the angle brackets in and just choose the exponent of the integer value that you want. Um, that's the best that you can do, really, I, I think. Uh, and, and, and all it is, if anybody has any other ideas, yeah. mm -hmm. there is a, a dedicated function I also wrote uh, a short for that. Um, so, um, there, uh, I mentioned uh, overflow before, and uh, it's a problem with integers, but it's not too much of a problem because very often. You're counting things that are quite small values. Um, not so with the, once you start using it to just to represent the pitch point. Here, um, we are storing a, a, a value that's absolutely packed. It's an 8 bit number. All 8 bits are fractional. It can't represent numbers as great as 1, but it can, it can represent uh, fra fractions from, from 0 up to nearly, up to and excluding 1. So it can store this value perfectly. Um, but what happens when you multiply it? Well, we saw before that you, um, you get an exponent of negative 16. So this is going to this is going to lose an awful lot of precision, right? Well, unfortunately, um, uh, the the heritage of C kind of has your back here. Um, you have um, promotion as part of the um, uh, the machinery under the hood that uh, basically says your architecture doesn't have well, apart from it's, it's not even go mentioned simply yet, but um, it doesn't have 8-bit registers, it has 32-bit registers. 
So any uh, operations on anything less than 52 bit registers, you are you're um, you're leaving uh, precision on the width of the floor. So these, this value is um, um, converted to 32 bit before the operation occurs, and you get you get an accurate result. And that's that's a that's a lossless result that we're seeing there because integer multiplication, so long as it doesn't overflow, is always lossless. Um, not, not such good news though if you uh, have a 32-bit um, number already and you're already saturating that value as we're doing here. Um, again, it's the, it's the same value, but we're, we're using the bits near the top of the range of the integer to store it. So when you square, you, you, you only get a, a result of the same width. Uh, uh, all of the bits that you care about um, are going to get overflowed. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, I think this is another example of UV. Um, so, uh, I have come up with an uh, elastic integer and I plead with everybody I, I present this to come up with a, a, a different name because it sounds kind of sounds like something you can find people with. Sounds like an Amazon service. Uh, that's a yes, <laughs> that as well. I mean, <laughs> like, when, when people, if people don't want to look this up on Google, they're not going to. They're just going to be taken straight to Amazon. No problem. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, uh, elastic integer, it, rather like a um, uh, fixed point, it's a, it's a class template. It takes the number of digits explicitly. Um, that's something I generally try and avoid at the time, to just say, well, pass in an integer. If you're going to 32 bit, well, then you've got a 32 bit number. But with elastic integer, uh, we need to remember how many digits are being represented for the reasons I'm going to. And then instead of a rep type, uh, there's an arrowist, which is basically saying, uh, this is probably going to be an int, unless there's two digits. Uh, uh, in that case, we'll give you something like an int, but wider. Uh, so here's an example. Um, uh, here we have uh, an absolute integer. It stores 31 digits. By the way, the, the assignment is included. So, so this is almost pretty much guaranteed that it's just going to be an int on any same architecture. Uh, is, is anybody here working on Cray? MS-DOS? Are you working on MS-DOS? Okay, I wish. all right, we're good. <laughs> we'll, we'll just assume this is, a, this is an int. Um, and again, it's, um, it's, this, is, this is a whole number. It's saturating the value there. All, all the, um, the bits apart from the sign bit is set here. So you pretty much guaranteed that when you um, if that was an int and you squared it, you, you're going to get a whole lot of overflow. But with elastic integer, under the hood, it's going to wind to a 64-bit um, type. And you get your, your lossless value there. It's the compiler that's doing the work and trying to make sure that you avoid overflow. <coughs> so there is, uh, there's no need for any runtime overflow checking, um, which makes it a very uh, efficient proposition. I mean, you, you may find that your don't need the width, let's say your value is 3, you don't need it to be a 64-bit um, type, so you're kind of wasting space there, but um, on a 64-bit on machine, you're, you're, not, you're not losing too much performance there. And um, so I said we needed the digits. Um, you, you double the width when you multiply, but when you add, you just take the, you just have one bit more than the, the wider of the two operands going in there, so we go for the 62-bit um, value here. When you when you double it, you get a 63-bit value. So again, it's just about fitting into the uh, to a 64-bit register. Right. So um, the the C in CNL is uh, um, short for compositional, and uh, one of the things that I, I try to do as much as possible is uh, separate each type into separate each concern into a separate type. And then allow them to be combined. So here we have a 31 bit wide um, integer that is um, scaled down so that it can store um, values from zero inclusive to one exclusive as, as before. Um, the difference now is with my previous example, we got a um, UB when we tried to square this. Now we're getting all the benefit of the, uh, the automatic widening of elastic integers. Combined with the, um, the friendly scaling for you that you get with fixed point, you now again have a, a value. There's not there's not a bit of precision left on the floor. Here. This is the this is a, the, the precise value of this square 
no, with no possibility of overflow whatsoever. Um, that's pretty powerful because it's, um, it, it does it in a really efficient way. Um, uh, yeah. So I mentioned, um, yeah, I showed you fractional before. When you when you pass a um, uh, uh, fixed point of elastic into fractional, um, you get you get sensible results out. One of the problems with fractional is, you, I mentioned the uh, numerator, uh, so the denominator, um, it's integer digits. It affects how many um, fractional digits you get in the question. Um, now, if you do um, port your code to a cray, suddenly you're in the 64 bit. And your question will actually have a different value, which means it's, it's not as portable. That's, uh, that can be a problem. Um, that, I mean, that's an example that's not likely to come to pass, but uh, yes. Right, machines have actually had jump processors and says. But do they? Yeah, I worked on one a few years ago. But um, back, back in the day, they used to have something. Uh, do, do their compilers now uh, make it 32 bit? Uh, you get like the Intel C and Fortran models. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to come up with another. Well, I'll have to go back to MS DOS examples. Uh, but yeah, but surely, sure, 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 um, the director of uh, processors is going to go to 128 bit in the very near future. Um, just, to, just to get the address space that would be required to address the changes that are coming out. Maybe, maybe one. Um, so at some point, yes. And they, there already is some support for 128 bit. Um, there, there's a, I think a draft proposal to um, put a ring on that in the in the standard and actually give us 128 bit uh, integer types. They are somewhat supported. You are allowed to have 128 bit integer types with a more or less first class fundamental type, but um, confusingly they are twice the width of accent. Um, for example, there there are reasons why there are some. Um, Bad legacy uh, design in the language that we would have C plus 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 plus. Yes. Yeah. With a long, long, long in. Yes. <laughs> well, so, like somebody suggested. So it's called extremely, extremely long. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, long, long, long int was proposed in the same yeah. paper. Long, long, long int as well. Yeah. That would be the 256 yes, bit. Yeah. And you could have a short long, long, long int. Long, 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 long is, is already 64 bit, and that yes. isn't even a joke. So, in a secret model, you could do hashing, we would read the actually max inch dot h. Never mind. Do you mean like, is that an angle where I can do it? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, um, so, yeah, this, this type here, by the way, this won't even work on a current Microsoft compiler because. Microsoft doesn't yet support any 38 bit uh, fundamental types. This will only work on Clang and GCC typically uh, if you have a 64 bit uh, processor. They have a type underscore underscore and, uh, 128 or 128 underscore T or something like that. Um, and so if you try and compile this on Microsoft, it won't compile and say, sorry, I, I don't have that enough weight for that. Um, and that's there's a whole other type that I don't talk about here called wide integer, which gets around that problem. Uh, and that's, that's really useful. If you're, if you're doing enough modifications, you very quickly run out of width if you don't want to lose any um, accuracy whatsoever. So, uh, runtime safety. Uh, actually, somebody was saying, oh, are we going to see safety in Europe today? And they've left already. Uh, <laughs> there's only one slide. Um, I, I should, uh, yeah. Uh, people always ask about this. It's, um, where Elastic Integer is uh, avoiding uh, overflow uh, at compile time, um, that's not always um, possible if you're doing narrowing cast or uh, compound assignment with like plus equals. You don't decide that the, the, the result type is, is wider. Um, in situ situations like that, you absolutely have to try and trap uh, overflow at runtime. Um, so here, um, again, um, because uh, of promotion rules, we don't always see uh, an overflow problem. This, is, uh, uh, this, this operation here will not incur a runtime cost because the safe integer looks at the results and says, well, that's definitely, uh, uh, we, we have room for that. Uh, actually, I'm not 
I'm sure if it's, um, that's a, a good one bit value, they might have to check. But if this was a, this, this was a bite, um, yeah, I might look at my side. If this was a bite, definitely the, this would be just as efficient as a, as a raw integer. Um, so here, if, uh, I said narrow and cast. This, um, this is a overflow, not um, technically overflow um, from the language point of view, because uh, at some integers don't overflow. Um, but uh, certainly, you, you, this value is going to, sorry? It's quite designed. That's right, yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, people keep talking about, uh, oh, when, when an unsigned integer overflows, you get value of zero or whatever. But, but technically, yeah, that's an overflow. Because yeah. what concerns me about a lot of what you're saying here is that so you're making your mathematics horrendously inefficient for the mathematical process of what you're going to do. Uh, well, I haven't shown uh, compiler explorer examples for all of it, but. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that as much as possible you just get the. Uh, well, to, to throw an exception. Oh, right, okay, so. You I have to do a check. You mean, I, 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 yeah. I, I, at the processor level, you have to do a check there to throw an exception. Well, if, right, if you do the check, like it, it, um, in the uh, typical case, the check will come back false. You typically don't um, overflow if you know what you're doing. I mean, you don't want to overflow on purpose. So it'll be rare cases where you do throw, and I, I, I would totally agree that throwing is the one thing to do in a situation like this, but that's what people ask. But, but the idea of checking, yeah. don't want, ignoring the throwing or not throwing, mm -hmm. the fact that you have to put in a check to check that you won't throw. Well, if the user wants to take you know, a, a, an 8-bit value, add one to it, assign it back to an 8-bit value, um, and also guarantee that overflow has not occurred or, or uh, modular uh, wraparound has not occurred. There's no other way to do it other than with a runtime check. And in, in reality, on, on most architectures, all it's doing is testing the flag in one um, jump, small jump operation. Uh, but there, there's no way around that. This, I mean, this is why I, I, I threw, threw so many slides uh, about elastic integer. Uh, yeah, and then there's just one slide to save integer because I think it's. Uh, it's not as good a solution, but sometimes if you want um, guaranteed errorless um, uh, work, this is this is a necessity. People kind of ask for it. Um, I would argue uh, it's better just to to, to run your code through um, UV sanitizer um, because if you're if you're doing this kind of thing in a release build, um, your, your code is going to be a lot slower as a result. And uh, ideally, this stuff never happens. This is for when you've made a bug. Typically. Um, yeah, and, and also throw it can be terribly inefficient. Um, I would, uh, I would just terminate if you find something like this. <laughs> your code is, your code is bad. Stop running it. All the, the children of nature. Well, it's <laughs> not, not my you. children. Not the way I raise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Oh, again, I saw I mentioned starting with certain is a good way to catch these errors. Um, throw. For um, better or worse, uh, if, if the throw occurs in constant expression, um, it, it, it is no longer constant expression, and, uh, um, therefore the server server will refuse to compile. Um, so, so this thing here is, is a good way to you might want to, you might want to test um, is this thing going to compile? If you know you've got to know the values of it and compile time for this to work, but then you have a lot of it's a great new facility in the language to, to test this stuff for you. And here's, here's some of the hideous of the um, error message that it out at you. Um, it says, oh, I can't throw it part time. What, what, what the heck? So, <laughs> fail. <laughs> okay, so um, users find literals. Users find literals are going to have a new browser, but they're great. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, 42 here is a, it's an unsigned long value. That's, um, that's just a, a feature that's, that's been in the language a long time. Um, Combined with um, past template icon production, it looks at that and goes, okay, you want an unsigned long uh, rep type. And it gives you a type. Um, integers are all fixed, integers are fixed point types. They just happen to all have exposed to zero. Um, fixed point is just a, a generalization of integers. So, um, so here we've got an exponent of zero, there's a rep type, there's a value. Um, that's kind of very handy. Um, here, 128 is an int. Uh, 
uh, experiment zero, you have that value there. Um, a bit wasteful though, because you don't need your experiment to be negative. You can make it positive. You're only using one bit um, of your int there. That, that seems uh, somewhat wasteful. So um, I've come up with a, um, a use of final literal. It's somewhat limited, but this thing, basically, you can think of it as compiling down to an integral constant. Does, does, um, does everyone know what the integral constant type is? It's a, um, um, a template type where there's actually an int is one of the template parameters. So at compile time, it always knows what the, its value is from its type, um, which, is, which is very powerful here. Combined with class template argument production, it looks at this thing. This doesn't actually have a, any, any kind of runtime value. It's um, kind of it's practically sizeless, um, and it looks at it and goes, "Okay, um, you can scale that thing by seven bits." And so the int stored under the hook would be one, and it just gets scaled by seven bits any time you want to uh, use it. Um, which on its own, I mean, it's still using thirty-two bits. So on its own, that doesn't seem like such a straight. Cool thing, but you know you can. Uh, it does mean you have more or less uh, limitless capacity, so long as your number only has a, like a small range where the, the bits are set to one. Um, so here's an example of a 40 bit number uh, stored in a 32 bit value. Um, uh, you cannot. You you have to have all these zeros, or else this doesn't work. But for this value, it looks and goes. Sorry, we can't put that into a 32 bit number. We're going to use a lot here. Um, in fact, on a Microsoft system, that would be a long, long, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I, I love Microsoft, but it's just, I, I have to point this out for anybody who is using Microsoft and wants to try and correct me. All right, um, so here, um, oh, I should double check this is right, because I just changed this from 2017, because some of these slides are old. <laughs> this is probably wrong, thinking about it, but uh, <laughs> in fact, you probably can store it. Oh, no, 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 this, this is the same. 2018, it's 11. <coughs> it's probably 10 bits, actually. So, yeah. All right. Um, then here, so uh, here's another uh, use of final literal. Um, ignore the color, it's not quite right. But uh, this thing, um, <coughs> where it sees elastic, it converts it to a fixed form elastic integer, um, which has some additional benefits. So here, it, yeah, I mean, uh, so this one too, it's looking at it, it's figuring out. The number of bits to use. This is the combination of the fixed point and the elastic, um, really um, uh, optimizing the, the range uh, of bits that it's uh, representing. And, and again, you might think, well, this is still a 32-bit number. But if you if you take values like this and, and then you square them, um, you're still going to uh, be using 32 bits uh, of range. So it gives you savings down the down the road. Um, so the, the compositional aspect of CNL is uh, it's not just confined to the types that are part of the, the library. Uh, as much as possible, I would like um, anybody who's written a numeric type or anybody who's yet to write one um, to make it possible to uh, use it with um, CNL. Um, this example takes a, a boost uh, multi-precision. Boost multi-precision gives you uh, big int functionality, also sense of dynamic and static is I'm only really interested in because you haven't noticed with static, static with size integers. So here, if you, if you set the number of bits um, as the minimum and the maximum uh, width of a, uh, of a multi precision type, you can come up with uh, numbers that are um, close to limitless. Uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly um, roughly where the limits are. So this <coughs> right here, this is just a bit of um, glue um, to make these two libraries work together. Um, there's a little bit extra. I've, I've provided the glue for some types. Um, so, so here you can you can um, represent Google, for instance. You you can do that with um, multi precision anyway because it's a whole number. You don't need fixed point to do that. However, what you can't do with boost multi precision alone is do a Google, um, and you can do that if you have fixed point of um, multi precision. Uh, what you can't do, uh, no matter what, is Googleplex because um, the, 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 the power component here is greater than the width of an int. And you can only use ints with non type template parameters. So I can't have an exponent of a Google because ints can't store that. 
Sorry about that. Just because it is the GMP management, we can only focus on that. Um, it's not. It's not about the, well. I mean, the, the fact that you wouldn't have enough around as well. Yes, limits the the engine. I mean, uh, boost multi precision can use any engine that you like. Uh, yes. I think it's a false to, to one of those. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, another one, uh, Boost Cindy. I don't know if anybody's heard of Boost Cindy, but uh, it's a, a way to. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a way to uh, 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 um, kind of abstract away some of the uh, quite fun to use uh, intrinsics necessary to get Cindy uh, functionality. Um, uh, I should mention there's also uh, a similar library that's um, going into a technical specification. Um, in other words, it's well on its way to standardization, which I've also been working on um, getting to integrate it the same way. So you can get, um, so here I'm, I'm so typically I used to be using Fig2 to, to compose these things together. So here we have a um, fixed point of boost and pack. Um, of, uh, so this can maybe pack a bunch of uh, integers together, maybe set four, for instance. Um, and then it's a, it's a fixed point type, so you have an exponent. So, so here we have uh, four integers, and they're all scaled, so they have 16 fraction digits. And um, then you can um, uh, uh, perform most of, most of the operations with, with a certain amount of readability. Uh, there, are, there are some problems um, combining these things together, because uh, simply types are not really numbers, they're uh, accurate numbers. Um, but this stuff, it just basically works because both these libraries are designed to um, be in friendly, and because they're in friendly, um, they, they work with each other. Uh, so, a, a demo that I've got working with Boost Cindy was just to, to generate a, a final plot. Uh, so, so, in this example, I think I'm, I'm, I'm clumping um, groups of two by two points together. Um, so that in theory you could get up to four times the the, the speed. None of what's uh, can take a very long time to to make that. I haven't achieved, achieved those speeds yet, um, but uh, yes, um, simply instructions are notoriously hard to to get the full um, um, speed up from. Uh, so some stuff um, kind of on the horizon. I mentioned the wide integer. I would like to have. Um, uh, there's, there's no reason you can't have you know you know twenty thousand digit wide number if that's what you actually need, um, and there's no reason to do that with the uh, required dynamic allocation. Um, so rounding and overflow, uh, I mentioned uh, overflow a bit um, because unsigned integers don't overflow. Uh, people sometimes complain, well, I wish that they did. I, I don't want to get a much smaller number when I'm uh, you know get a four billion. 4.4 billion, I don't want that to suddenly become a much smaller number. I want that to be an error and trap it. Um, I think um, one of the senior plan developers um, the other week observed that uh, uh, they looked through I think, the Google code base and observed that approximately 90% of unsigned uh, wraparound was actually a mistake and it should have, it, it should have been overflow. So even though people say uh, unsigned overflow is, is really great and we should have more of it, um, very few people are actually using it. Uh, and then, then, then rounding, um, I mentioned the interesting behavior of integers. Um, when you look at um, division versus um, shifting and floating uh, conversion from floating point values, they all do subtly different things uh, with respect to rounding. In some cases, they do things that are implementation specific. Sometimes they round towards active infinity, sometimes they round towards zero. Um, there's no consistency and also very rare. You, you don't you don't get round to nearest, which is what we typically want. By the way, there are, there are probably at least four different ways to round to nearest that are distinct and have different um, statistical properties. Um, so yeah, um, operators are a pain to write. Um, it would be nice. Uh, I'm really sort of looking forward to um, better classes because they should hopefully provide ways to. To get rid of a lot of boilerplate of writing operator overloads for these things. Um, and so it's not the full complete set of uh, operators that they were in the language yet. But either it'll work or it won't compile uh, for the most part. If you try this out and find it works, please 
Is that no? Okay. Yeah. So as well as the um, types, uh, a lot of people ask for just uh, uh, functions that take um, take fundamental types. And mm -hmm. um, so uh, I hope to provide as much of that as possible. Um, it's kind of a lower priority. I think generally most people would rather just have a, a type that does what they want and they kind of forget about all the stuff that's going on under, under the hood. Um, things get quite interesting when you then have to overload these functions for your different um, types. You want to put one of these as the branch into here. Um, put it here, then um, there's kind of a, an explosion in the number of uh, functions that need to get created. Uh, that's an interesting problem there. Um, we, uh, I think this is a language feature that we need. I, I showed you lots of use of um, I can't be thinking of decimal points. This would be super useful if I could take this value and go, okay, well that's an 8-bit number with four fraction digits. Um, that's currently not possible. Um, so, um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's going on quite a bit. Uh, I, if you want the next eight slides, uh, you're welcome to, but it's just extra, extra few rounds <coughs> for, for a bit longer. Um, so, let's see. Um, now, fixed point is just one example of a way that we want to scale integers. If you look at the um, um, chrono duration type, that's another way that uses uh, this ratio. Incredibly powerful, very useful for representing different um, time types. Um, and it's doing, uh, duration is doing a very similar thing to what fixed point is doing. So, why can't I, instead of having an exponent in the second parameter, why not have a more general thing where there is some static object that, that observes some static scaling concept? Um, it's a lot of work, but I, I, I hope to um, um, go on to experimenting with this, and then you, you get a lot more generality. So here, instead of a instead of fixed point, you have scale integer. Again, it takes the rep of the scale integer. There's a, the scale type. It could be ratio. It could be some other thing like an exponent there that has the power. That's basically your, your experiment number there. And then maybe you have you know, base 10 for people who want to, particularly people in finance, they repeat the base 10 and I'm so interested in binary. And then fixed point just becomes another one of my aliases. It's just a scale integer that happens to use uh, powers of two for the, um, um, for the uh, scale type there. And um, then that becomes incredibly powerful. Uh, here's an example of some of the things you can do. You don't have to scale by 10, you can scale by 100 and get very efficient uh, um, representation of uh, a lot of currencies that way. Um, having um, you know, 360 degrees, that's, that's something that uh, you need ratio for. Um, also, there's a really annoying problem with the, the way that um, integers are, are half closed. So, you get, so like an unsigned value will be from, an unsigned byte is from 0 to 0 inclusive to 256 exclusive. Um, which means that uh, if you you can't very easily and efficiently represent values from more than one inclusive, um, but perhaps yeah, with ratio you can get around that problem. People who represent colors using bytes, pretty much just because of this one value, um, can't really use the uh, fixed point type very easily. So they do. This would allow them to do that. Um, and then um, units. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard. Boost units, there's one or two other libraries out there. There's um, some um, efforts to try and standardize this in the library, uh, standard library because um, it's very easy at compile time if you know what the, what the, um, um, the units and dimensions of your types are, it can, it can stop you from um, making um, uh, really dumb mistakes getting your acceleration confused with your velocity, that kind of thing. Um, um, and and the scaled stuff that I just mentioned uh, might be a, um, a way, a, a, something in the right direction towards getting this. Um, and again, thank you very much. Uh, that's it, I promise. <laughs> thank you for uh, listening. <laughs> any questions? Um, well, currently it's the radical that I'm down. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to use it to uh, um, represent the genes and genetic algorithms at one point, or, or, or um, neural network. Um, 
values. Um, there's there's a, a lot of interest in using integers in these uh, um, very large scale um, convolutional neural networks. Um, uh, quite a lot of, of um, uh, interest in using 16 bit, even 8 bit uh, types because at that kind of scale, um, it, you know, as I mentioned, um, floating point is about 100 times as expensive. And um, increasingly, your phone or autonomous vehicles, um, things like that, want to make really heavy use of uh, neural networks. And uh, so they're already um, using this kind of technology, but with it, without necessarily the, the help of um, uh, types like this. So that, that, that kind of thing I'm kind of interested in. But this is now taking up all my time. <laughs> Um, do you mean um, in order to, to break the 64 bit boundary? Yeah, I know that, but like, for example, this would be handy. I wanted to like, uh, I could probably work with a more And in that case, you have a positive 48 bit number, but you need to take back. Like let's say it did not get big numbers, and then it's a repeated number, and then the repeated domain you can do some sort of algorithmic operations on it, and uh, then you know wouldn't overflow the buckets, but if you get the addition of the numbers in the buckets. Kind of. I mean, is it being treated as just a very wide integer? Yeah. Yes, that, that's what a wide inter integer would do, and you want to you want to specifically. I mean, I, I believe that um, modular operation is, is used a lot, yeah. so you. You want to specify with the, the overflow um, um, type that you wanted modular behavior. Um, and so you would compose a wide integer and an overflow integer that, that, that specifies that you want modular. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's one of the aims. Uh, yes. That's um, such a large body of work that it's sort of generally thought, well, let's, let's get the addition and multiplication and that stuff taken care of first, but absolutely uh, we want to do that. But it opens up some interesting um, questions. Uh, for instance, um, particularly for angles, do you really want to have um, two, uh, um, two pi as a full circle? Because uh, it would be quite nice if you had uh, you know, unsigned um, angles that use the full range of uh, types. So imagine if you have 256 degrees instead of 360 degrees, you get some really nice properties where um, angles, uh, differences between angles, are a huge pain in the neck to get right because if you sub add or subtract in the wrong direction, you get values greater than 360 and then you've got to um, cut them back down to either subtract 360 from them. It's a huge pain in the neck, but with unsigned modulo uh, overflow, nearly all of those problems go away except uh, they have 256 values instead of 360. Um, uh, so I, I'm thinking possibly um, a way to generate lookup tables. Also, embedded developers are quite interested in these types, and they very often don't have um, trigonometry as uh, uh, accelerated hardware. And they, they would be more interested in um, lookup tables where they decide how big the lookup table is going to be. They might only want 32 uh, values in this in the sine waves, for instance. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some open questions there, but uh, um, yeah, definitely at some point want to support all of the things that floats can do. Absolutely. Thanks.